Hey everybody, welcome to Kimmel's Irish Pub. We're watching The Vanishing of Sydney Hall. And quick, the numbers, Rotten Tomatoes, the critics have it at a 10%, while the audience has it at 85%. IMDb has it at 7.3. And I'll just read to you, it seems like it's a, well, I got it on DirecTV, so I think it's like a straight to DirecTV type movie. I don't know. Um, Sydney Hall finds accidental success and unexpected love at an early age then disappears without a trace. Sounds pretty in intriguing. I'm excited. Um, Michelle Monaghan, Ellie Fanning, Logan Learman, I like him. Um, and then uh, Kyle Chandler, coach, right? Friday Night Lives. So, you know, there's some good people in it. I'm excited to, to hear it. Uh, bread's done, so I gotta go take the bread out of the oven. But after I do that, I'm gonna start watching this movie and let you know what it's all about, so. Stick around. And if you haven't seen my magical pizza, I'm going to do this. Click up here, or up here, one of these corners, I'll put a little thing. You can go and watch my bread pizza making ability, alright? But, if you don't want to, stick around. I'll let you know what this what this movie's really about and catch you up. Alright, see you in a bit. Okay, I was going to wait until halfway through, but I decided not to. Two hour movie here, we're at the 45 minute and 45 second mark. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that, but awesome. Uh, the Vanishing of Sydney Hall. So, I think it's going to be a little bit complex, so I want to jump in here real early and talk about it a little bit. So, Sydney Hall is a kid, and, and um, he ends up vanishing at some point in his lifetime. And it's it's... Not hard to follow, but it's not easy to follow either. So they're flashing back and forth from when he was an adult, it seems like, to when he was in high school. So he's in high school, um, you know, and just regular high school stuff, um, you know. But uh, during his, uh, you know, he's very highly educated, or, or at least highly intellectual, I should say. Um, and um, the one teacher says to him, you should write a novel. What would you write a novel about kind of thing? And... And so then they flash forward, and evidently he does write a novel. And this novel is um, c creating some people to um, commit suicide. Um, so people are reading his novel and deciding to, to commit suicide because of it. So he has that going on in the future life of him. Um, and in the past life, he's, you know, meeting a young girl who lives across the street, trying to develop a relationship there. He's also assisting a, uh, a jock as well with some... So the, the jock, when they were kids, him and this jock, who weren't friends at this point, but when they were kids, they went up to this hilltop to bury, to bury something. And, you know, many, many years, I think they are in fifth grade, so now they're in high school. So many years later, he comes back to him and says, I can't remember where I hit it, will you help me? And so they're starting a small relationship there, but of course he's, you know, he's a jock and he's interested in other things than Sidney Hall is, um, who's more interested in reading. And there's a funny exchange between the two of them as well. Um, but the jock also is friends, his little sister is friends with the girl he's trying to get in a relationship from across the street. So you can see there's a lot going on here. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the, the underlining thing that we're, we're interested in is why did he vanish? And what is the thing that they dug up from, from under the hill or up on top of the hill? Uh, I think it has something to do with the, the jock's um, father. So there's a lot of mystery here to, to unwind. Um, but like I said, it's a little interesting to kind of follow what the, I think they've done when he's an adult and uh, going through life as an adult. He puts glasses on <laughs> when, he's a, when he's in high school, no glasses. So you gotta go watch for that and see where they are in the timeline. But uh, uh, because it's hard because it's the same um, actor and he looks very similar, but he has glasses on and one thing. but. And that whole part, he's all about the book that he has written. Oh, and then they even flash forward, forward, where he's, I assume, disappeared. And that's where Coach is looking for him as like a detective. He's trying to find him. But what he does, he has the long hair and a beard, so it's obvious to tell what time period that's in. And he has disappeared for five years. But he's going into libraries and things like that and taking his books off the shelf and burning them in the library. So... You know, obviously it has to do with maybe the fact that other people were committing suicide to that one book. Um, but I'm hoping all the puzzles will come together and we'll get a clearer picture of what's going on and all three of these timelines will meet somehow in some way. But it's interesting so far. You just got to really pay attention. So 
I'm gonna get back into it. I might jump in again before the end and make it a you know a couple of stops on this one because there's a lot going on. So stick with me. I'll be back. Hey everybody, we're at the credits. I apologize. I really thought I'd be able to check in a couple more times, but it got to the point where it's hard to tell you about the movie without spoiling it for you. Um, a lot continued to happen. The movie starts out about the kid in high school and they're flashing back and forth to him when he's disappeared and when he's an adult and everything like that and it's trying to link them all together but it's the basis of the first part of the movie is developing you know what he's become so how he's become this um, best-selling author and his childhood leading up to that and then you know his relationships during his adulthood and then his um, travels as a as he's disappeared and bearded and, and long hair and how do they all relate and you know what what has happened to him why has he disappeared and it, it starts to unravel a little bit I mentioned coach is a detective um, following him around putting the pieces of the puzzle together to find out where he's been he's been burning books in libraries he's using that to help locate where he is he goes and talks to his old English teacher um, so he's continuing to look for him and uh, meanwhile everybody's getting a glimpse us as the audience into um, you know part of the storyline but it doesn't all kind of make sense until the end and at the one hour and 18 minute they throw a small little twist in there um, which I didn't see coming um, nothing major but it was a little twist and that little twist and I don't want to explain it to you takes the movie and then kind of like turns it slightly and um, you know at that turning point it starts to become more tragic um, than like the beginning of it was was good, more upbeat, but it's the the, the tragedy that has um, been shown on the screen here. I don't want to get in it again without spoiling it. I do believe you should watch this movie. If you watched if you watch this review this far, I think you, you'd like this movie. Um, it's it's not. A, I I would also prepare yourself. After you watch the movie, throw on a comedy. You know, maybe a half hour or something like that. I think you're going to need that after watching all the tragedy uh, that happens in this and and uh, the circumstances that go along with it. Um, like I said, I like the, the actor, Logan. I thought he did a, a phenomenal job, he, you know, playing three, essentially, same character, but in three different um, time periods. Uh, not time periods, you know what I mean. Um, and Ellie Fanning, I thought she was pretty good, too. Uh, but overall, good movie. Check it out. I, it's hard. I apologize again for not being able to share more with you, but I don't want to ruin one second of it. Um, it's worth um, getting involved in and watching it and checking it out for yourself. So if you do, please let, drop me a line. Let me know what you think. And again, I apologize for all the vagueness, but at least you got a good idea what the movie's about. I don't know if I gave my rating. I know you're clinging on it, but uh, I think I'm going to give it an 8. I thought it was that good. Um, and it's not my type of movie, but it was pretty good. Alright? Uh, so, that's it. No more. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. Kimmel's Irish Pub. I'm back. So, let me first uh, say, I was upstairs making my pizza and still thinking about this film, as I often do. And then, as I mentioned, it was hard to discuss without spoiling it, so I'd like to now take this opportunity and make this an open discussion about the film. So, there will be spoilers, so if you haven't seen it, cut it off. But I'm going to start doing this at the end of a lot of my videos, I think, so, so we could talk a little bit about the movie openly. So I even opened a beer for the occasion. So I was thinking about the movie, and I, and I thought, again, I liked it. Gave it an 8 overall. I thought it was well done. I thought about what would I have liked better about it. So we know, now again, here comes the spoilers, so <laughs> go away if you haven't seen the movie. If you have, ch you know, continue to listen, and we could talk about this. But, uh, you know, I thought it was, it was great, um, you know, uh, and what they did. But what we know is, is that the one jock friend that he had... Um, you know, had some evidence about his father who was beating him and probably, um, and more than likely raping his sister, too. So very bad man. He was a judge and he had evidence on it. And, um, 
the um, Sydney Hall's mother, who, you know, ends up being like a villain in a sense, burns the evidence, not knowing what it is. Um, but she also, um, you know, abuses him, hurts him. He's she's the cause one for burning the evidence, which ends up meaning the jock goes ahead and kills himself because he can't prove anything, or, or you know what I mean. Everything falls on their shoulders. She also pushes him. Sydney Hall, who hits his head, and he's, and that's the part of the reason that now he's dying. So all this stuff has been going on, and then of course his wife, you know, and dying of asthma in the elevator. So you know all of these things that have been happening to him, and I think you know they have the part where I get it, he's getting divorced or they're separated. I don't know why they decided and this was the part that I was thinking about making pizza because he has so much tragedy and everything that's going on with him and, and he ends up, you know, at the end passing away and it's very sad. Why did they give him that one blemish? You know, they could have kept it. I think they could have kept him away from doing that. You know, he didn't cheat on his wife. Maybe he put a strain on their relationship because of, you know, his personality and, you know, um, everything that he does. Um, in his writing and stuff like that. And maybe that creates a strain and therefore, you know, they start to separate and possibly get a divorce. That's okay. Why do they have to make up the part where he actually cheats on her and, and make it seem as though he had cheated on her multiple times, you know? Why give him that blemish? That's my one fault with the movie. Um, because I, I'd like to see him, like, you know, for everything that he's gone through. And, you know, if he would have just been, you know... If that one black mark would have been removed, you know, he, he would have been held in much more higher regard. Although, you know, when he's dying, nobody knows him because everybody else is gone. Um, and, and the other piece of tragedy was his father. Um, it's not really clear. You know the mother collects disability for the father, but you're not sure quite what's wrong with him. He seems like he's almost like a vegetable, but then at other times he seems okay. So I'm not sure what his, you know, what, what his medical... Um, things are but uh you know obviously that was something bad he doesn't have a very big influence on the child's life because he seems almost catatonic in a sense so there's more you know bad things happening to this poor sydney hall um you know and i thought that was enough they should have erased that one you know leave that out he didn't cheat on his wife he just you know whatever but i guess there was a reason they did that that was the only thing that i didn't think that they should have done but you know that's me um, I'm going to start doing this at the end of every movie. Let me know what you think if you like this kind of discussion. Um, because that was originally what I was going to do, was going to critique these movies and say what I thought they could have done differently to make it more enjoyable to me. However, as soon as I started recording, I realized I'm just giving away spoilers every time I do that. And I don't think people want to watch that. So we got it twofold now. That's what we're going to try. We're going to try that going forward. Love to hear from you. Let me know. If you stuck it out this long, I appreciate it. All right, Kimmel's Irish Pub. This time I'm gone. I promise. All right.